Hi, my name is Hassan Gandrosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for Max Cookie. That's a new sneak peek about 3ds Max 2013 and this time I'd like just to introduce the uh, state sets, a new feature in 3ds Max. It's really useful because it's a, a, a new way to work on render passes and to do pre-comp inside 3ds Max and uh, it has a really powerful feature to connect to Photoshop and After Effects so you can directly export the project inside Photoshop PSD or After Effects project and uh, everything inside After Effects and doing compositing and then back in 3ds Max and, and uh, you have a direct connection between the two software so in the future maybe it will be expanded to other uh, composing software but it's a really uh, nice new feature set for 3ds Max uh, it works in a really uh, simple way it is a way to uh, manage different state of the scene recording uh, what you uh, are doing inside the scene so the typical usage is to use state sets as a render path management but obviously you can use it in, in other way to have different configuration of your uh, your scene actually it is compatible with uh, After Effects CS4 and CS5 and 5.5 .5. obviously in future it will be uh, updated to the new feature uh, let's see uh, a really simple introduction and we'll start using it in a future tutorial to do uh, more complex stuff. You can access to a uh, state set from the render menu and you see that there now we have the state sets. If you open the state set you have this new feature there. It's uh, a new uh, kind of viewport. You see that we have the state sets number one. There we have the composer and there the states and we have there the scene and which objects we have inside you see that actually we have no changes there and no changes there let's see how it works that's the uh, master uh, state sets now we add a new one you see there the states number two and let's rename it uh, hidden objects okay uh, now we can click on the record button there and you see that we have the beginning record on state you have to remember that now everything we are doing let's imagine for example that I select some meshes there and I hide it okay you see that this uh, changes are recorded then I can press um, I can press again the record to stop the recording so now we have there something changed uh, you have to remember that all, not all the, st uh, the changes you are doing uh, inside the 3ds Max can be recorded uh, for example if you uh, manage some transformation uh, it will be not recorded but you can check the uh, help user manual to see all the changes uh, usually all the stuff that can be uh, related to rendering are recorded so if we go there, you see that there we change something in four node properties and if we open we see that the object body, body 0, body 2 and body glasses with no objects over has something changed. So actually we have this, uh, this state there. Now we can for example uh, record another state so we can select the previous one and that's the master then we can add another and we can call it hidden and different output for example and there we can do uh, an id by name and we can set again an id that's pieces okay let's do undo record okay you see that's the state the basic state and uh, uh, we can for example go there inside the rendering and we say that this rendering will be done at 250 so it will be really really little and the resolution will be really low and we'll have no final gather okay and we recorded the state so you see there inside the anaden 
we have three render property changed, and we have you see that we change the a change and the final gather change there. So you see, we know uh, what is changing and what is uh, recorded inside the state, and that's really uh, simple to understand how to use it. If you like to see the state there inside the scene, you have just to click, you see, over uh, the, the state. So we can see that this one is the basic, this one is the one with the hidden mesh. Let's close a little bit. And this one is the new one with, uh, uh, with uh, the other uh, rendering feature I, uh, enabled. You see that if we have this one enabled, for example, and I, cr I press again, we have again the master one with no changes. Um, we can obviously add and add and continue forever to add more, more, more uh, states with different names and different uh, parameters. A really interesting way is that actually we made uh, a simple changes that are not so important and relevant changes to the scene, but if we can think that, for example, we prepare different passes for the rendering, then we can go there inside the compositor, we can open the compositing uh, compositor view, and you see that we open it a new viewport. Let's use the zoom. And you see that we have the scene. Let's scale a little bit more. OK. And you see that there we have a representation of our scene with a state. That's the state with the changes we've done inside. And the interface is really similar to the other node view inside 3ds Max for the uh, slate material editor. And then you see that all the uh, state with their representation of the output uh, will be inside the compositor or output composite. And there we have how to add the layer and how to compose. So you see we can open it and we have the name of the layer the opacity, how it will be uh, composed inside the, uh, the composite, and then you see that there we have the others, so we have the possibility to say how to output. There, for example, we have the possibility to choose where to save the file. Uh, now I choose a simple directory there, and let's call uh, first.jpg Sorry. That's sorry. Uh, the file there that can be uh, opened uh, after the rendering. So sorry, I, I was doing uh, something before I can do. Uh, so that's the representation of the scene. Obviously, there we have the uh, schematic view uh, zoom. Obviously, before we have to render, so we can uh, scale there the viewport, uh, we can go on the first one. We have nothing we can record. You see that we are recording there. And we can say to save this image uh, inside cars. And let's call it first.jpg. OK. And stop recording. You see that we change it the save file name. Then let's save it there. OK. And we say that this one is called second.jpg. OK. Stop recording. And then let's go on this one. It is called. Now we can record, and let's call this one third.jpg. OK. We recorded everything. Then we have there, you see, states. 
and we can say render all states. There we have also some option about the render states, but we'll see in a future tutorial. Let's say render all states. You see that it starts working. It is saved, then it is working on second. And you see that we have the hidden objects inside the rendering. And then the first, that is the bigger one with all the objects. Okay, you see it is done. Now you see that inside it is refreshing, or if you have no refresh, you can go inside the compositor and press refresh. Now you see that there you have your nodes with the name, and you have the various images, and that's the result. Obviously, if we change there, for example, the transparency of this one, let's say 50%, you see that there we have a different result and for example you can say to use the screen you see that we have different uh, result there. So uh, it's really simple to prepare some precomp there inside the precomp viewport and then export everything inside 3ds Max uh, sorry uh, um, After Effects or a PSD file, or you can also use this one to prepare a scene to be exported in other uh, composing software, or it can be just useful to understand if something inside our scene works fine or not. So that's another interesting way to use it. Let's move it there. So uh, that's the state set introduction, obviously uh, it is a complex part of 3ds Max, so we'll need to work on some uh, other tutorial to understand how to use it and how to create complex feature and how to use it as a render path management. So for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on MaxCookie to check for new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye!